Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the Grasp of Avarice Dungeon. I am doing it on the Titan and it is a flawless run. So if you want the emblem, hopefully, which is the emblem I've got on, hopefully this guide can help. I'm doing it on Sentinel. I will be changing weapons and some armor as we go. So I'm going to explain about the weapons and armor to start with, but I have put timestamps in. So if you want to just skip to the part you want to see, no problem. But if you want to watch what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, this is where it starts. Top tree sentinel is what I'll have on the whole time. Suppressor, grenade, catapult, lift. I will be starting with the weather horde and then changing to hung jury when I need to put another exotic on. I'm using my my favourite Cartesian coordinate, not the one that everybody's saying is the god rule. I don't think it's the god rule. I, I do prefer mine. It's got more range, uh, more impact. And the stability means it has more range. The more stable a fusion rifle is, so the further away it will do damage. It also has more on the mag. Slightly longer charge time, but that is not a problem when you're talking about a 4, 460 versus a 420. Starting with Threaded Needle, and then I'll be switching uh, and on the Ogre and the Boss on the DPS sections. I'll be sw uh, switching to Sleeper Simulant. For the Cannon section, I'll be using the Fallen Guillotine. And for the Sparrow section, I'll be using the Ascendancy Rocket Launcher. Now, the armor I'm using... The mods are kind of going to stay the same regardless. So particle deconstruction is a must. Obviously, we're using linear fusion rifles and a fusion rifle. And I'll be switching. I'm starting with the line rampants. And I'll be switching to these with melee wellmaker and recuperation. We'll talk more about them when we get to the gauntlets. The chest plate, I'll be starting with an arc chest plate. But when we get to the ogre, I will switch to a void chest plate. Now, they've got the same... Uh, perks on them taking charge so when I switch it's not a big problem and then when I rally a barricade or a banner I've got I'll switch to this to rally it so I get 16 sleeper simulant shots now this is what I was saying about the the melee well maker when you get a charged melee kill you'll produce an elemental a void elemental well upon picking it up I will then take redu reduced damage for the a duration of time I think it's five seconds uh, so it's a bit, bit of synergy there. I'll be starting off with 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 the just the normal helmet with linear fusion with grenade launcher and linear linear fusion finder. I'll be switching to helmet Saint fourteen during DPS and during the cannon stage. I'm going to put pressure scars on, which basically heals you when you get kills with a weapon that matches your subclass. So that's I'll be using the fallen guillotine, which is void, so no problem at all. So that is the setup. It's a relatively good run, uh, and I hope it helps you guys get your flawless. So when you start this dungeon, the mechanics are kind of similar all the way through, apart from the amount. So to start with, the, the mechanics for this dungeon is you've got to produce uh, exotic engrams, exploding exotic engrams. They do have a lifespan of, of how long they can be on the ground and how long you can hold them. You can hold them for 30 seconds, and I think they can be on the floor for 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds before they explode. Uh, every time you pick another one up, you refresh your timer. And this crystal you see at the back there, that is how you get rid of them. You go and stand next to the crystal, you'll see uh, it says your temptations leave you. Because obviously, avarice is greed. That is basically what it means. So, you know, you're in the grasp of greed being in here, or at least the, that Willem, is it Willem 2, the, the collectibles that you've got to find, the guy that came in here searching for exotic loot, that's m meant to be the point. But uh, it's a bit of a play on words, or, or a bit of a throwback to this was the old Destiny 1 loot cave. People used to stand quite far back to allow the ads to spawn, and then they'd shoot them, create engrams and come and do what Destiny players do best. Cheese activities. To get maximum rewards <laughs> we love it so you have to produce 50 orbs you know when you've produced 50 whether you're holding 50 or not because that wizard will spawn and when the wizard spawns you have produced enough uh, to feed feed the, the crystal and then open up this part of the dungeon so once you get in you're gonna have a little bit of a jumping part got the shrieker we just take the shrieker out that's why I've got the threaded needle on and because I've got catapult left on and line rampants, I can very easily make this jump onto this ridge. Now, sometimes when you land down here after doing that jump, you will get hit. But you can see I've got resist times four. So 
in destiny terms, uh, a nuclear bomb would have to drop on me to kill me. Not quite, but you are very, very tanky. If you've picked up orbs and you have protective light on, which all my helmets have for this run, apart from precious scars, I don't think that's got it on. It's a void mod, so you need to have something with a void affinity to actually put it on. So, picking up orbs is, is uh, very essential for staying alive in this. And we've also got recuperation on. So, pick up orbs, you get charged with light, which means you've got protective light on, and you start to heal. So, it's important to, uh, to uh, try and produce those orbs. Make sure your weapons are masterworked, or you've done the catalyst. Uh, the other, the other cool thing is obviously we've got we're using top three sentinels, so we've got defensive strikes. So powered melee kills give you an overshield. When you have an overshield, any melee kills after that give you melee energy, and you do more damage with the melee. So I think it's like two. Once you have got your overshield after you've melee two enemies, you start one hitting them, and you're getting melee energy back every time you do it. So. <clears throat> If you see me punching stuff a lot, A, I'm on a Titan. I mean, you know, win in Rome. But B, I, I am I might be trying to get my melee energy back. So it's not just because I'm you know. Hello, I'm I'm partial to the to the taste of crayons. I must admit, I was a Titan main before I played any other character. And speaking of being a Titan main, the Titan works really well in here. It's actually better than the Warlock, I think. So, as you've seen, when we got into this section, I, I did do a skip because Lion Rampants, you can jump all the way to the end, bypassing all the mechanics, uh, and uh, just run right to the end and then jump up, and you can access uh, a switch which will open this door, which will allow you to access a switch, which will open a door on the other side. And it's kind of worth your while to try and take if you can take the knight, I managed to take the knight and uh, the acolytes, and that's a section done. You just, as you can see, the line rampants with catapult. Now, the catapult left. It's, it's a funny one. You can't just double press to activate the boost. A lot of people say this to me. What do you mean a, the difference between the jump and the boost? Well, you can singularly jump, but your boost isn't isn't infinite. So. When you jump, you see that's a boost. I jumped and then I boosted. If you boost and then cut the boost off, it almost looks like you're doing a, a hunter jump. And line rampants, what they do is they say they give you more boost. They don't give you more height. They just give you more boost, so you can try, you can stay in the air for longer. If you cut the the boost off, if you cut the boost off. Uh, and you, you allow yourself to fall periodically, like like I was doing. Lime rampants actually refund some of your some of your boost. That's why you can do Titans. You, you can do that sword flying thing with lime rampants and catapult jump. So I'm just explaining about the jump. A lot of people, you know, when I say about that, but don't don't boost, just jump. To the, you know. Some people that concept is just lost on them. Because they just think, well, I'm, I'm just jumping. So you just want to press jump, press jump, and then boost, then cut. So boost, and then press boost again to cut your boost, and then do it again. Line rampants will allow you to do that for quite a bit. This section that we're in now, as you can see, it's it's, it's really hard to talk about strategy for these because it's literally do, it, do what it says on the tin. So you're you're making your way. Uh, round this area, you'll activate the first console, and it will tell you where to go to activate the second one. So there's the first console you activate will tell you to go to th it's, is it one I think, and then tells you to go to three, uh, and then from three to two, and then from two to, to one, and then one to four, something like that. But you follow the route I took on the video, you'll get through it. The console will tell you it's got it's got a like a digital uh, display and it will tell you which door is opened when you activate the the switch the first place you go to will have a wizard coming out and it will have a bunch of uh, hive that will come out and then the second place you go to will have a wizard with a bunch of hive that won't come out that you've got to go in and kill them 
And then the third place will be the three fallen, and you'll get a Scorch Cannon. And once you get the Scorch Cannon, then you go and activate that, fire it into that uh, little console thing, and it'll open up the door. Watch out when you go up the door. Uh, always stop at the second entrance, right or left, it doesn't matter, uh, because there's like an Indiana Jones thing where the, the big thing rolls down the stairs. So, we are here. We are here at the Ogre, the first real DPS. And you can see I'm changing my setup here. I'm putting on the double linear fusion rifle reserves to rally. And that will give me 16, you can see there. And then I'm going to put on uh, a chest plate with double void. I've got Helma Saint 14. I've got uh, Hung Jury with Subsistence and Firefly. And obviously, Sleep of Samyon. Now, when you come in, you're gonna have, you're always gonna have a few of these guys here, and you see the the hive, the hive drop, the the engrams. Uh, I don't, I never pick those first ones up. Just melee him, get get over shield. The idea is you've got to pick up a scorch cannon, and you've got to go into the rooms. This is the right room. You've got to go into the right. And then in the left room, you've got to collect 25 uh, exotic orbs, engrams, and you've got to deposit them at the crystal, which was right, right about where the ogre was. It's doing that. It's 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 how you choose to do that that's the difficult part. Now the way I choose to do it, obviously you've got to get 25 engrams. Each air, each room can give you between 11 and 12 to 14. This one, I think, gives gives more on the other side because it gives more easily than the other side because the, the additional hive are just out here on the balcony, which is the, the additional hive on the other side. They are uh, out here and with the, where the ogre is. So what I do is I, I hit one side, as you can see, when, I, when you first come in, you've got your super. When you pick up 10 orbs, something I haven't explained yet, when you pick up 10 exotic engrams, it gives you all your abilities back, including your super. So you can use your super a little bit more freely. Uh, so I come into the room and I put a super down straight away. This is what I do for the first DPS. I put a super, I put a bubble down, and then I pick up the 10 engrams, which gives me my super back. So I'm just checking, I've got 24 of these engrams now, there's 25. So I've got a little bit of time, so I'm going to be doing DPS. I'm going to be doing DPS from down at the crystal. So you're going to have a couple of these guys outside. I could have picked one of the orbs up if I needed to, one of the engrams, just to refresh the timer, but I decided I wasn't. I decided I didn't need to. I'm coming down to the crystal, and what I'm going to do, as we're getting low, you see Burden 6, 4, as we're getting lower, I back away, and then... I wait for the, the ogre to come over, and then he will do this thing, which he didn't do until I actually shot him, where he, he kind of, was kind of like a wizard scream, and now we're doing DPS. When you reload doing DPS, make sure you back, back into the bubble, you can see there the bubble, because I've got helm on, I will be getting an overshield each time. It, I don't have to wait for my health to regenerate before I actually go after him again. And because I've got double void resist on, he nearly killed me there. Because I've got double void resist, I uh, I, I, I could su survive his shots a little bit better. And as you can see, we've done about a third. Now that's what we've done that phase. All i done was tell you what i done. Let's talk about how all that works. You've got to deposit 25 exotic engrams. You can do one room at a time. I don't. I do both uh, and deposit 25 in one go. So the little kind of nuances of this is obviously 25 mortars I mean, when you bank them. The ogre uh, will come to feed on the crystal and then as soon as he comes down, as soon as he's fed and, and, and it says that he's fed, even though he's standing right at you, You've got to wait for the the little kind of audio cue. It's a, like a wizard screaming, and he kind of most of the time he puts his hands in the air. Sometimes he doesn't. That's if he doesn't come to the crystal, and you don't hear that immediately. 
put your bubble down when you hear that and it should last for the whole DPS section. The second kind of thing is, when you first come into this area and you come up to this room, you will have a super. You won't have it for the second time. So what to do is, run straight into the room, fire at the first edge you see, and then throw your suppression grenade to control the adds down to the left. Once you pick up 10 orbs, you're going to have your super. If you're still in danger, which you shouldn't be, if you're still in danger, you can put your, your bubble down like that. Putting the bubble down, as I should just go through everything, because there's a lot of people that make this mistake. Uh, they, they go to put the bubble down, and they, before they know it, they're standing there like Captain America. Make sure you hold the super. So when you activate your super, you have to hold the super in. If you just press the two buttons to activate the super, you will just get a sentinel shield. If you hold them a little bit, it will look like you're going to get a sentinel shield, but you won't. You'll get a bubble. Your suppression grenade is really good in here. I'm just producing an orb, so I, I want to kill some of the enemies. If I if I need to, I can kill some of the enemies with with firefly, and it saves me taking taking even more kind of damage. Normally, what happens is when you come out of those rooms, you kind of get you kind of get pushed by a, a heap of thrall. Because your melee, even when it's not charged, gives you health back. There you go. Uh, Frysia, the insatiable, has succumbed to temptation. And then he kind of throws his hands in the air. And it's like it's like something kind of... It's hard to explain. It's like he pulses. That's when to put your bubble down. I'm putting, a, I'm putting my fusion rifle on to start with. And what the fusion rifle does as it procs particle deconstruction times five straight away. So my first linear fusion rifle shot is as powerful as it can get. After each DPS section, I go back into this room, check to see if there's any heavy ammo because, man, ammo in this dungeon can be an issue. I've done really good runs where the runners, as a guide, has been wasted because I've been at the boss for 35 40 minutes and haven't dropped a brick of heavy i'm just looking to see if there's any more so it's just rinse and repeat as you can see it's going to be a decent three phase so let's talk about dps for a second so every every phase is the same here we're going to go into this room fire at these ads i'm going to drop the cannon and then i'm going to throw my suppressor grenade and take care of this night all the other ads down here are stevie wonder they, they've not got a clue where I am or where they are, what time of day it is. Make sure when you produce your engrams, pick them up and get back to the Scorch Cannon as fast as possible to stop it despawning. Scorch Cannons do not despawn unless they're picked up. And even if you pick them up, they have a time that they will stay active. It's not a, a long time, but as you've seen there, it's enough time for you to go and get your engrams get back to the scorch cannon it just is so much easier that you just need to get one scorch cannon per run but like i say it's not a failure if you need to you know don't don't look at it as as anything other than just what you've got to do if you have to go and deposit your moats because as i say you've only got 30 seconds from the time you pick up your moats to the time you need to bank them that is why i fire my shot from the other door to this door and then pick up the last moat outside because uh, there'll always be two or three I need to kill outside. So DPS, we're doing it from down, as you've seen, we're doing it from down at the, the crystal. You will, you will take flinch. It's just, there's nothing you can do about it. The Titan is the worst for doing DPS here. He's, for me, he's the best everywhere else, but he's the worst here. The crystal's going to help you here, that's why I back away. I, I back away just far enough that I, you see how I back away there, just that I can walk up to the crystal, and I'm just outside, I'm, I'm waiting for him to do his, you see how he's immune there, there he goes, he kind of puts his hands in the air, and now I, I put the the linear, the, the Cretasian on him, and that, that procs, as I say, all five stacks of particle deconstruction and just keep going back into the bubble 
Elmer Saint 14 is going to give you your your overshield. I ran out of heavy. Doesn't matter. And that's it. That is the ogre section. Now I'm going to switch to my rocket launcher. I'm going to put rocket launcher reserves on. Uh, nothing else needed to be put on. The Sparrow, I'm, uh, well, I'm saying nothing else needed to be put on. I'm changed to the Wither Horde, but not that I need it. I'm just changing in case, in case I didn't get heavy ammo. No special Sparrow is needed for this next section. The Rocket Launcher is the most important thing. But if you have a Sparrow that reloads your weapons when you're on it, then use that one. What we're going to do here... <clears throat> as we're just going to make my way down, I'm going to put my arc damage chest plate on, which is going to be the chest plate I'm going to use now for the rest of the run. I will switch at the boss just to get the double linear fusion rifle reserves. Uh, but that apart, it'll only be to get those reserves, then I'll be changing back. So, there is a route I take. I finessed the route a little bit. I think it's different from the Warlock run. I do not access all the, all the switches now. You don't have to. One, in the first two sections, you only need to access one. See, I'm completely missing that. Because the point of this Sparrow race is it's not how fast you get to the mine. It's how fast you go through it. Now, you'll see here, now the time for the next mine had appeared. If you hadn't have drove through the mine at full speed, uh, you wouldn't have got that far towards the next mine before it appeared. So if you take the exact route I'm taking, make sure you get off your spiral when I get off and fire a rocket at the ads. And that you will do this every time. Now the only other trick that you need to learn, or maybe not learn, but do, is at the end. So you see here, we've gone through here. Mine appears now. Well, we're almost at the first switch. Left, I, when I jumped over there, I used left shoulder to kind of push myself left, you know, that kind of sideways jump that, that it does. And then I do it again here. Can watch out for that switch. Because if you hit that switch, <clears throat> it, there's a good chance it's going to kill you. I don't know why that switch kills you, but it does. If you hit it, it doesn't kill you, but it'll, it'll hurt your spiral. And as you can see, I finished that. With still four seconds on the clock. Easy. It's it's really easy. Get off the spiral in those couple of places. Make sure you clear those ads so that they don't melt your spiral as you're going past. Remember, it's not how fast you get to each mine. It's how fast you leave the mine. So you need to be going at full speed as you go through the mine. And you'll be further away from the mine when the next time appears. Okay? Right, now we're into the cannon section. So I've, I've switched here. I've got a fallen guillotine on. The perks don't matter. It's a void sword. All right. Now, let's just say for talking sakes, you're not doing this on the Titan. Whatever your subclass is, put a sword on that matches it. Right? If you're on the Warlock, you can go Devour. Hunter, uh, Tether and, and Viz. So... Whatever subclass you're on here, Solar would be good here as well uh, to get your health back because that's going to be your biggest thing is getting surrounded. So the idea here is uh, just I, I just wanted to make it a little bit interesting. I thought I would suppress myself so I can't jump or do anything. I threw that thing down just stuck to the floor. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're trying to find a servitor with like a white shield around him. It's an immunity shield, right? He He's immune to all damage. He's not immune to shooting you, though, but he's immune to taking damage. What you have to do is deposit exotic engrams into the crystal, and it will drop his immunity shield. It's 20 you have to do, and you've got to do it four times. You've got to find the server four times. So as we're going over here, we're getting close. There you can see him all the way up at the top left there. What you have to do to make sure you go to where you want to is... Uh, see, I... I I seen him when I was coming over there, but I didn't see him in the video. I didn't see him until I'd landed. What you've got to do is you've got to move the cannon. Now, the cannon's normally got three positions. Left, right, and center. The center one will be where you fire 
the server out of uh, after you've you've killed it. Because when you kill the server, or or when you take its health away, it turns into a bomb, and you fire it. You see on that kind of that kind of balloon thing in the center. There's those uh, circle things with the the fire line going through them. You've got to explode them, and that takes down the shield on that balloon, and then you go up through the shield and kill the kill the boss. So when you get to whatever section you get to, uh, there's going to be a heap of ads. They're all going to be drag apart from three enemies, so they're not all going to be drag. The ads you really need to worry about are nearly all going to be drag. Right? There'll be one captain who drops three of these exotic engrams. There will be two shanks with each wave that don't drop any engrams, but are just annoying. And then there'll be our old good friend and colleague, uh, the Scorch Cannon Vandal, who you have to kill because you need the Scorch Cannon to fire the server. The only thing I would say about this section, because it literally is, find the Scorch Cannon dude, find out, uh, sorry, find the server, get up there, find the Scorch Cannon dude, uh, take him out, while you're taking ads out, collect these, and you can see I've got 21 here, collect these, and then you'll see here we're going to kill the server, I'm just pre-firing in case a bunch more ads come in, which probably is going to happen. Kill the server, and the server then dies and changes into a bomb. As with many of the encounters, well, three at least of the encounters in here, you have to be careful of picking up those engrams when you don't mean to. Because they will kill you if you've still got them when the timer runs down, and that's the end of your flawless run. So, we found the server, we've killed the server, and now we're just going to fire him out of this cannon, and he will then explode his thingy. Is it, I can't remember, it's a 90 second timer you've got. You've got to do this four times, so that's one, one down, we've got three more to do. And it is rinse and repeat on each section. So I normally just drop the Scorch Cannon because I'm going to get another one here. This Scorch Cannon dude is always in the same place when you get here. He's always on that balcony. He sometimes will come down, but that is where you'll find him and meet, you know, to start with. So just take him out and then you haven't got some madman firing basically small small rockets at you. And, and, and I mean, I don't... I, that's it. Uh, when, when you're flying over to the, the, the sections, you will sustain fall damage, so remember to boost to cut your jump. Don't jump into the... Don't jump into the cannon. There's a little suppressor grenade there helped out. Don't jump into the cannon because you'll lose all your boost. Because it'll put you... You'll, you'll jump into the cannon and it won't deactivate your... You know, just because you're flying through the air it doesn't deactivate your boost, so you will use all your boost as well. So, just stand on the circle in front of the cannon and allow the cannon to do its job. Do not jump into it. And, like I say, just make sure that you, uh, you know, you keep an eye on how many uh, burdens you've got. And, and if you need to, it's the exact same here, when you pick up 10 engrams you'll get your super, so Make sure that you keep, you know, keep your eye on that. If you are in any trouble, don't hesitate in popping your super. When you... Don't worry about the server. Sometimes it's got a mind of its own. It is 90. It's a 90 second timer. Make sure that you move the cannon so that it's facing the relevant bomb uh, mine on the balloon. And you don't have to charge your shots here. You literally can just fire as long as you get numbers off it. You can just fire. There's the next one all the way over there. I want to speak a little bit while we're just rinsing and repeating. I want to speak a little bit about the boss. I'm gonna gonna do some some forward forward prep here because this is this is pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna go back over and do the exact same thing. <laughs> I think <clears throat> I think I've covered everything about this act this this activity here. The boss section is as easy or as hard as you want to make it. Right? 
when you go to get into the boss section, there are a couple of key components. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, the easiest dungeon boss we've ever had. Because the mechanics, my six-year-old son can understand them. And probably be able to work with them. So it's 60, you've got to produce 60 uh, exotic engrams to deposit in, a, in the crystal in the center that starts DPS. How you how you uh how many you deposit at a time is up to you i like to do it in even numbers when at all possible but it's not always possible uh same rules apply you get your super back after every 10 uh 30 second timer when you pick them up but you are gonna have waves of ads that spawn now whenever you're doing any activity like this you need a base of operations a safe spot somewhere that you can go and take a breather that will be where I'm <laughs> where I'm hanging out most of the time. Uh, that that there is there is a place like that here. It's it's uh, it's right at the back. It's on the because the boss is in a separate area in the middle on his own. Uh, and the only things that kind of chill there are the boss. And then every time at, when you first go in and activate the boss, and then after each DPS when the boss goes immune again. You're going to have a, cell, a, a, a shank and a vandal. They're tanky, <clears throat> but they're not that tanky that you're not going to be able to kill them. You just have to take those down. So let's run through it in order. You're going to have the boss. Right at the start, you're going to have the boss. You're going to have a shank, and you're going to have a vandal. And you're going to have ads from where we are, aggressive, uh, being aggressive from the left and the right. You're also going to have... Obviously, our good friend, the uh, Scotch Cannon Vandal, he will probably either be floating about to your left, uh, or he'll just come towards you. Kill him, but don't touch the Scotch Cannon. It will not despawn if you don't pick it up. And you won't get another Scotch Cannon guy. <laughs> then the idea <clears throat> is to charge the shot same way that we were doing to open the doors at the Ogre. Except this time that the engrams are going to drop in the three locations. So you've got left, right, and then back middle. Right? I, I would normally just say back, but it's the far middle. Right? Left, right, and then the, the, the back area that joins us to. Ten engrams will drop in each area. You more than likely will not get round all three areas. So aim at minimum to pick up ten in an area. Once you've fired at that, same way as it was in, in the Ogre section, once you open a door, that door then stays open uh, until you open the other door. So you have to do a separate... If you do the left side, then the next time you've got to do the right. And once you do the right, the left side becomes active again. Now, when you kill the Vandal when you get to the boss, he will drop ten of these. So... You, if you need to use your super, which we are going to use it as soon as we get in, uh, the Vandal gives you your super back. The problem with the Vandal being so nice is that the boss is there. And the boss does have a stomp mechanic. So unless you can... The boss sometimes teleports away from you. It's almost like he's like, oh, no, I'm getting out of dodge. But that's not as I've learnt now, that doesn't happen all the time, he didn't teleport in this run. So, once you've done that, it's literally about, once you've took down the shank, once you've took down the vandal, it's literally about uh, getting, producing overall 60 uh, exotic engrams, depositing them. As I say, I like to do it in, in groups of 10. Uh, but I actually, when I, and you'll see it works out like that quite a few times in here, I like to do 20, right? And and you have to be clever when you, when, because when you deposit your moats, you're going to be taking a bit of heat, because you're, you're right in the centre of the map, there are ads all sides. I personally, what I, what I like to try and do is when I get into the centre, I like to try and put a, a, a barricade down on the side uh, facing uh, the bottom back area but I, I kind of angle it 
so that it can cover the back middle area and say right. If I've came from the left, it can cover both of those. And I can also use the crystal uh, and the, the, bat, the shield to give me cover from the boss because the boss is going to be like patrolling that area like it. Jesus, is like the school ground bully. So we'll talk more about that. I just wanted to get a few extra details in before we get to the boss. Uh, that is this section done. As you can see the Great Sphere and all that. And we go over here. All cannons now will point towards wherever you are. The cannon will reset itself to the middle. And you are now... You're one activity away from getting your solo flawless. When we get up here, I'm going to change my chest plate to get the... Obviously to get the... The double linear fusion rifle reserves. Ammo can be an issue in this run. In this area more than any other area. Even more than the ogre area. Be and, and the reason why is because you kind of use some of it to take out the shanks and the, the shank and the vandal. There are places you can do it from safely but you might even be able to use your fusion rifle. But uh, you need to produce a fair amount of, of Sleeper Simulant Ammunition. And this over all the other... I am not kidding. In the last 24 hours, I think I've done this Titan run successfully, flawlessly, four or five times. This is the best out of all of them. Uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you won't know I said this, but I actually tweeted out that I'd done a, I'd done a run on the Titan, and I had, but it was such a scuff... It was quick. A quickish. It was an hour. Which, for this dungeon, not too bad. Uh, but the, the ogre section was so scuff. But the boss section was fire. The ammo was there. I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, this run, the ogre section was the three phase. I'm okay with that. And the boss section was actually pretty good. So, this is the setup. Obviously, I'm using Hung Jury with... Uh, the Firefly and Subsistence, that's for add control, because they are going to be grouped together. Uh, Cortesian Coordinate, Sleeper Simulant, and then I've got my Particle Deconstruction. I have got an Arc chest plate, Double Arc Resist. I've got uh, Taking Charge. Uh, I've got Protective Light. And then on the Gauntlets, I've got Well of Tenacity. And on the Boots, I've got w uh, Melee Wellmaker now. What we're going to do to start with is we're just going to come straight down here and we're going to pop the bubble. Helm of Saint 14, blind this shank, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to stay in front of the shank. The shank is not getting out, <clears throat> and that's the shank gone. Now this invisible guy. I'm just going to keep going in and out and just refreshing my overshield. And there we go. And now I've just run straight past the boss. And I'm just going to put another bubble up. Now I've deposited, you can see I've burnt, burnt by riches. I've deposited 10. That's what I wanted. Now we're going to, this is what safe, so this is the safe area now, right? You've got these ads over on the left. You have ads on the right. They, with the weapons, they're not really going to be able to do too much. But they are going to constantly throw those annoying little grenades. But... Firefly really helps clear out a bunch of them, which you will see more on the right. Now, this guy snuck up on me. I never heard him. Normally, I hear him. I've got good recovery, so... You see there? That's that's why I put Firefly on. <clears throat> now, we can start producing... <clears throat> excuse me, my thought seems to be... Uh, not know what it's doing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to produce the exotic engrams. Now you can see there I produced a couple of orbs which charge for like times two. Now I have my protective light. So I'm really going to have to drop a bomb or a galahorn on me to kill me. Once my shields are broken. So as you see there, you, you charge that shot. I'm just going to put a suppressor grenade down there and you drop a heap of engrams. I'm going to try and get through two areas because there's 10 from each area. So I've got 15 there. There you go, I've got 20. <clears throat> I've already... I've already deposited 10. So this now will be 30 put in. That's half as many as I need. If you feel like you're in trouble here... I, I am not doing it. 
I, I, I should, just to show you guys, but I didn't feel like I was in too much real bother there. I could have popped my bubble. I could quite easily have popped my bubble there, because the next time I produce engrams, because I'll be picking up 110, I'll get my super straight back. You'll see me literally go out of my way to melee enemies sometimes. It's because when I get my overshield, every melee kill I get after that gives me melee energy. And while I've got an overshield, my melee's at more power. So eventually, I think it's two melees, then you just start one-hitting them. So you can see I've got ten. I'm going to go into the middle. There's only one, one or two enemies here. I'm not even going to bother with them. And I'm going to try and pick up another 20. There we go. So that's, when I bank these, that's 50. I need 10 more for DPS. The boss, he'll just keep patrolling this area. As you can see, the area I've, where I've came from, I've tried to put this barricade diagonally so it covers one side and it covers the area we keep dropping down to. So not this area on the left, but if I was to go round the left to the area we just come from, that's what I mean by back, the back middle area. It's, it's the opposite side to where we are now. So I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to produce another 10. Just throw it in here. As I say, if you use this one, when we're producing the orbs the next time, I can't use this one. I need to use another one first before this one will become active again. So there's five and then the other five are down here. And now this will be DPS. Now you can see I, I, I keep the Scorch Cannon with me. I don't really burn it too much. I'm just going to put that down there. I'm still going to grab the Scorch Cannon. And then we're going to go up on this kind of lone pillar up here to do DPS. I'm going to put the well down. The ref, uh, bubble down. Well. Bubble down on the right hand side. <clears throat> what that does is it blocks any damage from any of the other ants. And the only thing that can hit me as the boss and it just you're probably gonna get about 12 12 sleeper shots off on them and you'll see how much damage that'll do keep that don't reload just put a couple of cartesian in them and there you go that is the first phase done my my scorch cannon disappeared i know i've got some heavy ammo lying about but now we've got all the all the good people have come back so you've got Scorch Cannon guy, you've got Shank, you've got uh, Vandal, and obviously now the boss is immune and he's patrolling the area. So when you get that, when you when you when you come out your ADS, you hit fire, and when you get that big red kind of indicator, the only ad that will come back here is the Scorch Cannon guy. Now we've dropped the Scorch Cannon, you don't have to worry about him anymore because he won't be back. So now, my, my main concern is now getting ammo. Because I cannot deal with those ads unless I've got ammo. We need to take the, sh the shank and the vandal. Because you can't freely move around the map. See how I'm getting hit? You cannot freely move around the map while they are still alive. The vandal is a sniper. So the, the shank, sorry, is a sniper shank. So you would expect to not be able to run about freely when you've got a sniper shank that basically is in the center of a circular room there's nowhere where you're free so i'm just trying to clear some ads here see i've got heavy just dropped there and i've got a charged melee so i just hit fire i could have kept me kept on meleeing and, and and tried to get super energy back i'm um, sorry melee energy back But I don't want a chance getting targeted by the shank. So, when at all possible, stay on the bottom sections. Because there's, there's a ton more cover in the, bot in the bottom sections. Don't go up on top. You can actually run right round here. You can see I'm, I'm not actually getting too much hassle. Uh, double arc resist helps. But uh, when you're at the bottom here, there's tons of kind of cover from the middle. And then we're going to head back to a little kind of cubby hole at the back. Now, there is a cool thing you can do. Uh, you can jump up on top of this thing. And then what you're going to do is just crouch. Now, you see 
as soon as I went up there, I seen the ads spawn, and then we'll just clear them again. Hopefully, they'll drop us more heavy. He heavy, heavy ammo on this, this, this encounter. Oh, there's heavy there. Is it a premium? You don't... It's not lying about all over the place normally. So, crouch down. Go to the left or the right. If you go in the centre of this air, this this kind of on top of this box, uh, it's really hard to keep landing your shots because your character doesn't know what he's doing, whether he's ducking or he's doing whatever. So, left or right, the sniper shank, as you can see, cannot hit us. And the sniper shank dropped heavy. Just in time, we've got another wave of ads, so we'll just clear these out again. If you've got a weapon with Firefly, oh my god, I've never seen that in this boss fight. One ad dropped two bricks of heavy. Now what I can do is I'm going to put on my, my solar chest plate and I'm going to pick these up. It's the most heavy I've had before the second DPS phase ever. And what I will do is I'll get back in the center and change back to my double arc resist. Now I'm going to put my bubble down and I'm going to melt this invisible vandal. Just make sure you you get the Cartesian on him. And get get those uh, five stacks of... Of... Uh, the good stuff on him. Now what we want... See the boss just teleported there. Now I can go down here and pick up all of... All of these, uh, all of those engrams, it gives me everything back, gives me my grenade, my melee, everything. And there's, there's more heavy in the middle, so now we can start producing, producing, uh, exotic engrams. Fake exotic engrams, may I add. It's kind of, it, 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 it's, it's a really cool mechanic. It's kind of, I, I, I think I've said this before, but it's, it's like something that we had uh, in Forsaken. Do you remember the the trickster mission where you had to pre you had to throw the the, in the the exotic engrams, the fake exotic engrams? I'm going to be honest. It's almost like what it's like getting the Eon gauntlets. <laughs> they always feel like fake exotic engrams to me. Uh, again, back to the crystal. Put them in, and then we're we're about, we're, on, we're about halfway towards our next DPS. It's a three phase. It's a comfortable three phase. So now that we've we've done it on one side, we've got to go to the other side now. Now, when you've got the Scot El Scorchio, you can still melee and you can still proc uh, defensive strike. And you see there, I've got the resist. Uh, I've got the resist up. That resist that comes from the Wellmaker. Uh, that's the synergy I was talking about. So I'll just throw our suppressing grenade down and try and pick up. I don't know if I'll get them all. Yep, I got them, and then I get my defensive strike, which gives me my overshield. And the overshield's actually really powerful. I, I, I'm quite, I was quite surprised. You see there how much damage I'm tanking with it. Nearly got enough. And then every time I leave, when at all possible, I come back to this area. So I'm not kind of juking it out with the boss. Uh, but but other than that, I would just, when, when you're coming away from the crystal, just go in the opposite direction that him and the ads are in. But I think that kind of goes without saying. So now we're going to produce more exotics, fake exotics, Aeon exotics. And got a 10 back into the mid. Now, again, I think this goes without saying. Don't put your bubble down when you know it's going to be DPS. Because then you won't get it back, obviously, for DPS. <coughs> so... Particle de uh, deconstruction times five. I didn't get it there because I, the way it works is the fusion rifle fires a certain amount of bolts. Five of the bolts have to hit the boss to proc it. But you can see with the damage that we're, we're outputting, 
That's not a big deal. So I'm not going to bother reloading for one shot. I managed to get two Cortesians on him. And now we went some repeat so straight away. We, uh, we, we, we put a little bit on the ads, try and clear these ads to the left. We know our friend El Scorchio will be here soon. And like I said, once you get that thick red marker on your on your mini map, that means he is here because he's the only ad that will push up to the back here. So just like having a look, I'm just gonna grab some orbs that gives me my my uh, protective light. And I'll go down. This is a great little place here. You're in, you're in. The only thing that can hit you here is is these guys. But we, considering we're actually here to kill them, uh, it's not something I'm worried about too much. I can see a brick of heavy. So, as I've said before, I've struggled here for heavy so many times. And this run, it, it was so good for heavy. So what I would like from from this now is another brick. Because we've got to take out, got to take out the shank, and we have to take out the. We've got to take out the shank, and we've got to take out the the vandal. Now another thing I haven't spoke about because we haven't. Oh man, the brick of heavy in the water. You can't touch the water here. I haven't said that yet. I don't think so. Uh, you cannot touch the water here. You can in the cannon section, in that one part, but water is deadly. It's like it's like going on holiday from the UK to Spain. Water is deadly. So we just we just want one more brick. But yeah, some a mechanic I haven't spoke about is the boss has obviously he's got his uh, Lord of Wolves. It's probably not, but looks like it, right? But he also fires those spider, th those, those uh, spider mines. I, I always call them spider mines because it looks like spider webs that they throw out. Uh, we've got enough to be going on with, with this dude, so we're just going to put the three sleepers that we've got on. And then just like, you can see the Cartesian is still... Still uh, doing doing good work. I'm just checking the left hand side. Just uh, kill some ads at the bottom. He's back, and I'll just I'll I'll just expel my my fusion rifle on him. Nothing from the left. Oh, a mine up from the right. There we go. That's that's the one dude down, and that, that actually should trigger some ads. Nope, there's the, there's the spider mine that he throws. That's what it looks like when it's on the ground. Just come over here to pick up some special because I did expel all my special. Uh, see what's over here. Oh. Heavy. Heavy, you see. Oh, tons of special. Tons of special. So we'll pick up we'll pick up a whole host of special while we're here and we'll just do a... We'll just, at this... So the way it's working now, I know I've got heavy in the centre. I'll just get some, I've got my resist, we'll just get a melee kill. We'll go back round, I've got seven sleeper simulant. But I've got my bubble. So now I can put the bubble down, I've got enough Cortesian. I can see the heavy. I'm just going to put my bubble down here. Look for, look for... Invisible boy, put the Cartesian on him, and then I'm just. We're not even going to bother messing about, just. Get the three of them on. And then the Cartesian should finish him off. Now, if the boss doesn't move, you don't go for those. You need him to move. Tons of special. I'm full now on heavy. And I can just put my bubble down now. He, don't try if he's right at those engrams don't don't take the chance and just run over because the boss has a pretty meaty stomp mechanic as well as having the lord of wolves we all know how it goes when you rush a lord of wolves guy uh now we've cleared out that side 
I'm not bold if there's one or two ads left because it's just more for me to melee and get my defensive strike. Now we're gonna we're gonna so we've already put ten in, so we need now to get fifty. If you it's not a it's not possible all the time, but when I said I like to get even numbers, it just makes it easier to remember. You know, it's when you start getting sixes and fives and stuff. So we managed to get managed to get uh 15 and where's the other one there we go 19 oh jesus right if we have to because we're just gonna melee him and get the defensive strike before we get in the center so that's that's 29 which is not ideal so we're using the crystal and the barricade, and you can just creep through the crystal, uh, creep through your barrier. Remember, you can actually stand in the middle of your your barrier, and you, you kind of are. It's the same in crucible. You, can, you when you stand in the middle of it, you're protected, kind of from both sides. So I noticed that there was only a couple of those drake. So I'm just, I've fired. I'm just charging. You've got to charge it like three times. You've got to let the charge. You actually hear two kind of audios. So, but that's the third charge. You fire it, then a charge, and then when you hear the next charging noise, uh, then you can release it. I only picked up 10 there, uh, which puts us on 39. The reason I came and banked 10 is because I ran in the wrong direction. And the minute I was in the wrong direction, uh, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not going to bother bother messing about. I will just go and bank them. And just get rid of it. You see how, how he was one shot? It's because I had defensive strike. As long as you've got defensive strike, your melee's increasing damage. Uh, for each melee. So eventually, you will start one shotting. So, there we've got 10, so that's 49... How many can we get from over here? Oh, we got the 20. Which is annoying. Because that's 59. <laughs> Just put the... Now, because... Because uh, we only need one. I didn't put my supper down. Because I, I don't need to produce... Uh, I don't need to produce a whole load, I don't need to put 10 in, because the, the reason why, and I, I'm pretty sure most people will understand this, the reason why you don't try and and put pick up more than you need is because you've got to wait at the crystal to put them in. So unless you're DPSing from the crystal, uh, you don't really want to be kind of hanging about there. When, when your deposit is done. So, because I only need a couple, I'm pro I'm, I'm going to do a DPS from the crystal here. Simply because, it's, it's, you know, well, I might do a DPS from the crystal. I've got four. I know I only need one. May I can't remember if I've done DPS from the crystal, actually. I think I might have just went to the spot. Yep, you just go to the spot. Tried and tested. So I only needed one, picked up four, I put put my bubble down, proc all the Cortesian, all of the Cortesian, and a couple of shots and it should be done. So as you can see this area, is, is, if you play it right, it's kind of chill, right? I flinched me right off my shot there. It's kind of chill, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's nowhere near, it's, it's the easiest dungeon I think we've had. You will see a lot of flawless emblems because this is achievable for for anyone really. So that is the run. Uh, I never got any. I got lead from gold and one two punch on my shot on on my matador, but I already got a quick draw snapshot uh, sniper, which was what I wanted because the thousand yard stare was my sniper from D one. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support that you guys give these videos. If you've enjoyed this, a like and a comment would be awesome. Take it easy, guys. Have a great new year, and I'll speak to you guys in the next video.